What's up guys, welcome to the channel, Austin here. And Eason. And today we're gonna be talking about everything we know about the Scarlet Nexus. Hey, but before we get into the video guys, I just gotta say, have you subscribed yet? Are you part of the NerdZoo crew? Because if you're not subscribed yet, you might be missing out on a pretty big opportunity here. And I'm talking pretty huge. You see, cause me and Austin, we have a goal of hitting a thousand subscribers. And when we do, we plan on relaunching the entire channel. We're gonna start a video podcast. We're gonna start the NerdZoo show and we're gonna get into streaming. So come be a part of the first 1000, help us reach our goal and be part of a growing community. And one last thing before I go, I just wanna thank our current subscribers so much for the love and support that we've been getting over the days. We work our tails off and we do everything we can to provide the best quality content that we can at the moment for you guys. We want to get better and we want to do more and more and more stuff. So thank you so much the guys who are already out there helping us, supporting us and being there for us because without you this, this would be a lot harder. But with that said, thank you and let's just dive right into the video. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about it. W what's it all about? Because uh, I saw a little bit of gameplay that they posted a few days ago or a day ago, however long it was. And it looked pretty cool. It was uh, it was really actiony. Like you could, you were throwing people up in the air. You were do doing all sorts of stuff. It looked pretty cool. So yeah, tell so me. those are the highlights right now. All the coverage is of the action, and in typical JRPG style, it's amazing. So let's dive right into it. It's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, Scarlet Nexus is an action JRPG being developed by Bandai Namco for the Unreal Engine, and it's coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. As far as release date goes, we have June 25th, 2021, and we're hoping to see more come E3. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking kind of forward to it since I saw the gameplay. It was kind of jumpy. I mean, reminiscent of like the game that we're really excited for right now, Bayou Man. Like, you know, just the jumping around, the combat, the flying and stuff like that. It, it looked pretty cool, but this was all like anime based. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know you're not typically into JRPGs, but this is making uh, headway. It's turning some heads. It's it's generating a lot of buzz. It's, it's on my list for most anticipated games this year. So the setting is a brain punk, like futuristic setting in which these super soldiers get superpowers, but they don't know what they're going to get. And they have to like be hooked up to these like, it's pretty weird. They show it in the gameplay. You have to be like hooked up to a machine. You're not sure what the machine's going to bump into you. And then when you wake up out of this like spaz that you have from the machine, you have a superpower. Some people get stuck with uh, being able to uh, communicate telepathically. You, however, get the ability of telekinesis. So you can pick up objects and sling them at your opponents. So it's kind of like Mortal Kombat where like you find your power when you have the mark. Are you, are you referencing the new movie? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, so no, forget about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like Mortal Kombat. So it sounds it's, like they're it. not unlocking their arcana. <laughs> they're they're being. <laughs> it's like they're getting an iPhone update. Oh, okay. It's a pretty sick <laughs> iPhone update. Yeah, pretty sick iPhone update. <laughs> being able to hurl dumpsters at giant monsters is pretty cool. So <laughs> brain the brain punk setting comes from a mix of cyberpunk, but also everything being connected to your head. So that's where that kind of brain punk aesthetic and feel comes from. And I think it's being coined with Scarlet Nexus, period. I have never heard the term brain punk before Scarlet Nexus. No, no neither have I. So in the beginning, you're going to get to choose between two main protagonists, Yuito or Hasane, and, and forgive me if I mispronounce them, but it's so in typical JRPG fashion, you would pick a character, play through that character, but then if you wanted to play the other character, you would just have the same story. You would either just have different abilities or go through with that different character's moveset. Kind of like with you're playing through the Mass Effect Legendary Edition right now, you can choose male or female. This is not that this is not that typical jrpg fashion in this one it's kind of like how they did the resident evil remakes you're gonna play one character you're gonna have one campaign you're gonna play another character you're gonna have an entirely separate campaign with some main weaving thread plot points okay so this Rob. isn't like an open world thing there's no like branching paths or anything like that no so okay. i'm actually glad you brought that up so as far as the open world thing goes as far as i know you're gonna have a metropolis hub world which is like the city that you see in the gameplay and then within that you're gonna have like a hangout area which almost looks like an apartment and I don't know if you've ever played any of the Persona games. What's Persona? Okay, so you haven't played any of the Persona games. So what comes over from the Persona influence is you're going to be able to build bonds with your characters, which is going to help you in combat and with the story. And you're going to be able to do that outside of combat and outside of your mission structure at the Hangout, which is like this apartment uh, room-ish. We haven't really seen too much about it. Hopefully we get more. But as far as we know right now, it's just like a communal living space. You're going to be able to go up and have interactions and do 
activities in the metropolis so very persona-esque any persona fans out there are going to feel right at home and i'm kind of glad they're adopting this because it really works with that franchise you know all these games with their hub worlds it's getting kind of it's getting to be a lot like why is every game got to have a hub world i don't know what you're talking about every game out coming out right now is like breath of the wild we need more hub worlds oh no i don't think so i think you need to just have more game less hub world you didn't like the hub world in demon souls no oof seriously i like to just play my game feel like you're in your own head here like that's you know not open world's different but if it's like a story based game i just want to play like a game as if i were playing like the old halo games just take me on a one track route right down the campaign mission list give that's me what some, you want yeah give me some give me some uh this game is not for you. No, it's not. <laughs> this game is not for you. It's not for you. Play the combat and get out of there. And as far as combat goes, let me tell you a little bit about the combat. So the combat's going to be your typical action slash uh, combat, um, kind of reminiscent of something you would see in Kingdom Hearts, most recent Tales games. You're going to just run right up to these dudes. You're going to slice and dice. So like you said, Biomutant, very similar, very close quarters, very in your face action. You're going to have a sword. You're going to have your telekinetic abilities. And what comes with those telekinetic abilities is quick time events or QTEs. Now, normally with a QTE, like I think of the original Tomb Raider remake. Quick time events? Yeah, quick time events. Uh, yeah. Are you familiar uh, with them? Yeah, I'm familiar with them. <laughs> yeah, that's the response. That's a that's the action. I'm not going to argue with you this time. That's the normal response. <sighs> so it reminds me of back like the, you remember the Tomb, uh, Tomb Raider remake, the Square Enix one, the first of the trilogy? Yeah. The You'd be like crawling through like this cavernous slim area and then you would have a quick time event. And if you didn't have that, you'd like your head would crack through a spike. Yeah, the only good thing about those ones is failing the quick time event. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, no, th that wasn't good. I didn't like watching that. But these quick time events are better, I promise. So they've been getting nothing but praise from the news outlets, and it's a closed doors, uh, hands on preview. So we didn't, we can't get our hands on it. Uh, I think we have a demo coming. I don't quote me on that, but we'll look into it. We'll put that in the comments down below. All right. Well, if you can, uh, but make a quick time event better, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, so what what you do is you're going to say you're you're fighting these enemies. You're going to see an object and your psionic bar, which is the purple like wave file looking bar that's on the bottom of your screen on like the bottom left above your health. That's like how much psi you have and you can use that to sling the objects with your telekinesis. When you see an object that's telekinetically available to throw at an enemy, you're going to do that and then midway you're going to have this action that you perform and it, it's being described as incredibly satisfying and then you're going to uh, slam that item into the enemy. Me. Oh yeah, incredibly satisfying. It's supposed to be fluid, so it's not supposed to take you out of it and stop and then like have you mash a button. It's actually fluid with the game controls, so it feels like a part of combat rather than like taking you out of the game to do a little side game to continue playing the game. So along with the psionic bar, you're also going to have uh, party members, and with the party members comes like these actions that you can take. So in the middle of combat, you'll be slicing and dicing with a sword, and you or like these uh, with the with the other character, she has like these floating knives. They just like she slings them i don't really know what they're called but regardless like your ally abilities when you trigger them you're gonna have your ally pop on screen and then you're gonna get like a buff and there's a number of things that come with the ally abilities but the ones that i've seen in the gameplay footage provided by these outlets is like you're gonna have flame applied to all of your weapons and whenever you have one of these status buffs attacked or attached to you for the period of time that you have it you're gonna have like these red tubes like the computer that gave you your original psionic abilities to begin with so they're going to be like flowing behind you during combat and your sword's going to be engulfed in flame. So that's pretty cool. And you have multiple allies. I got this really important question for you, though. Oh, hit me. So when you have your allies, yeah. are they going to be following you around like in the world? Or are they just going to pop out of nowhere when you activate this ally ability? So when you activate the ally ability, they pop into frame as like a little, just like a little activated frame that they'll be like, hey, are they with you? What's are that? they with you? Are they with you before that? I believe that? they're like, with they you. Around? I believe they're with you actively doing damage to the enemy. Yes. But then like, okay. when you activate the ability, makes you'll sense. see their image. That makes sense. That's like that's like Outer Worlds. <laughs> I don't think you can switch to them. That's though. like Outer Worlds where you use the ally ability and it cuts to them just using it. I like that. That That's good. Yeah. Good. So on top of all these uh, bonding with allies, which is going to increase your ally ability and increase the skills and all that, you're going to have a skill tree. Uh, and it's a pretty meaty skill tree. And then uh, on top of that, you're also going to have 
perfect dodge. So while you're running around slicing and dicing, if you dodge perfectly, it's going to slow down time, just like I think with Biomutant, the gameplay that we've recently seen. And Assassin's Creed. Sure. Yeah, exactly like that. So if you if you dodge perfectly, it's going to slow down time. And then what's really satisfying about that is if you slow down time and you have Psy in your Psy bar, slam them with a dumpster. And it's, it's, it's very fluid. I like how fluid you talk. I fuck. <laughs> so anyway, that's a, that's about... <laughs> you didn't, I wasn't expected that. That's about all we know right now, guys. Uh, comment down below what your favorite thing is or if you're anticipating Scarlet Nexus, uh, if it came out of nowhere like it did for us, at least for me, uh, I don't think Eason's feeling it too much. Hopefully it comes to Game Pass so you can give it a try. But Eason, I've got one more thing. Definitely feels like a Game Pass one uh, that you talk about. It. I hope so. You keep predicting Game Pass games so that I think whenever they stick, you can just be like, yeah, called that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Scarlet Nexus is going to be on Game Pass. So you heard it here on Nerd Suit People. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. Until next time, take it easy, guys.